Game changers, let's do it. Game changers, what leaders, innovators, mavericks do to win at life is written by Dave Asprey. And who is this guy? Well, Dave Asprey, the CEO of Bulletproof 360, a health and wellness company, and he's also the New York Times bestseller for another book called The Bulletproof Diet, which all of their products were based off of Bulletproof Coffee. It consists of a special Bulletproof coffee bean that has been processed in a way to reduce toxins that inhibit brain function. Then, that's added to Brain Octane Oil, another little special concoction created by Dave, which helps with weight loss through ketosis. And finally, they add unsalted butter or ghee to really ugh, ramp it up. So with one cup of that bad boy, you're gonna elevate brain function as well as reduce any type of hunger. Its premise is a collection of all these tips from all these scientists, these leaders in specific spaces and from really high achievers that give you the goods on how they become successful and as they say, win at life. But the net net of this book is a focus straight up on mental and physical health. With that in mind, here are the five main big ideas coming from Game Changers. Dave loves dropping F-bombs. They are fear, feed, and freaking, freaking, yes, getting freaky, you know? Yeah, bounce go wow wow style. Dave rolls it back and explains that all of us are wired for survival and that we're always evaluating the three Fs. The first one being fear. Do we fear right now that we're gonna die or get killed? And our natural instinct is fight or flight to save ourselves from this fear. Feed is thinking about more long-term. What is the sustenance that you need to survive, not just right now, but an hour from now, a day from now, a week from now? And then lastly, the freaking, yeah, is how are you gonna propagate the species? and make sure there's a ton of your babies running around and that you fulfill your end of the bargain of your life's purpose. Dave goes on to explain that we've evolved a lot since then, but we are still attached to those three Fs. We've also developed other problems that really inhibit us from true happiness or from us reaching our goals. So nowadays we're more concerned with power, money, and well, sex. Power, it's still more of an immediate thing, which is what is the level of safety we have so we don't have to feel like we're running away or fighting something. Money, almost like feed, it's how you sustain yourself over time, right? It's the resources that you have to plan longer term and have that fruitful life. And sex, well, that, that's the same. We're, we all still wanna look attractive to appeal to the opposite sex so that we can further our lineage. Dave explains that even though we've evolved from the three Fs, we still haven't really removed ourselves from it. It's just masked differently. Dave recommends that we just have to be self-aware, aware of what we truly want and not get the three Fs or the power, money, and sex get in the way. The first big idea, overcoming the three Fs. What do you do when you're stressed? A little bit of this. So stress really comes from worrying about what's gonna happen in the future. But what that really does is take you out of the present. You're never really living moment to moment and that's why you may be feeling anxious. To keep yourself in the now, Dave just says to have gratitude. Be grateful for something. Me, not to sound cheesy, but hey, I'm grateful right now just to have the opportunity to freely voice my thoughts, as well as have your attention to check out this video. So thanks, really grateful for that. But what Dave does is he takes it a step further. He starts the day off and asks himself these three simple questions. What am I grateful for? What can I do to make today great? What kind of person do I wanna to become today? And those questions allow him to prioritize his day, have a lot of clarity and direction for where he should be spending his time, and really to anchor and allow him to focus on the moment. The second idea, be great at being grateful. Can't, need, bad, try. What do those words have in common? 
Dave calls them weasel words. They are these words that creep in that set you up for failure. And why these words are important is because words are there to help with programming. The more and more you say it, the more and more it psychologically embeds in, in, in your behavior. Let's break it down. Can't, that means you don't want it or you just don't have the expertise to do it, which really, really like that's, that's a lie. Need, it sets you up for a certain expectation that is, is not productive. Instead of needing something, perhaps wanting something is better. The desire, the anticipation, the, the feeling that you get for just striving for something, the drive. Because once you start needing something, again, if you don't get it or if you're struggling to get it, it just makes you anxious. Bad. I don't wanna get over a philosophical debate, but what is bad? Uh, Dave asks, like, bad is rather subjective. To one person, Brussels sprouts may be bad, but I myself love Brussels sprouts, especially with bacon. Mm. Hmm. So instead of judging things through a filter of good or bad, just focus on what it is and see the opportunity. What could it be? And lastly, try. Again, this one subconsciously already sets you up for failure. It's like a half-ass way in saying, I might do it, I might not, uh, I'll try. One of my famous mentors once said, mm, do it, do not, there is no try. All right, set so attempt at Yoda, but you get it, you get it. So the third idea, avoid these weasel words. Can't, need, bad, try. Erase. I have confession. I'm really bad with names. Terrible. Literally seconds after shaking someone's hand, them introducing themselves, it's just one ear, up the other, around the corner, down the street, and bus all the way to nowhere land. And that's why I resort to, hey man, looking good, dude. Hiya. To learn more effectively and enhance your memory without looking like a dunce, you need to visualize. Don't tell Dave that you're a better learner through sound or touch. Good old science tells us that three quarters of our neurons that work with our senses are connected to sight. If you're still complaining, you just have to work on it. Just another muscle exercise. The next time you listen to a podcast or read, just take a moment to close your eyes and visualize. Just don't do it while driving or walking or any crazy things. So better to just sit and visualize. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Sit or stand still and visualize. Idea number four, visualize. And I'll end on this quote as the last big idea. Making money is like having an orgasm. The more you look for it, the harder it is to get. Mm-hmm, right? So it may be self-explanatory, but the analogy essentially says that if you're focusing too much on the results, it may cause you to overthink and thus ruin the experience and in return, not even get you to your destination or obtain that goal. Idea number five, focus on the journey instead of the destination. And speaking of journey, our journey is just wrapping up here. Your top five big ideas from Dave Asprey's Game Changers. We're looking at overcoming the three Fs, fear, feed, and freaking, yeah. Big idea number two, being grateful. Big idea number three, avoid, can't, need, bad, and try. Number four, visualize. And finally, number five, enjoy the journey. All right, again, that's Game Changers by Dave Asprey. What did we miss? Please share your tips in the comment section below. If you didn't read the book, what do you wanna know? Ask them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And thanks again for checking out this video. My name's Truman. This has been a brief book club book summary. Subscribe, uh, would love additional support with some of these, thumbs up. Apart from that, I'll see you in the next video.